Tip number one is to pick something that you actually like. Now, it sounds simple, but in my experience working with clients, typically when people think of exercise, they think of one or two things, walking or going to the gym. Now, if you're somebody who dreads running on a treadmill or you just don't see yourself going for daily walks, then it might feel like, well, what else am I supposed to do to make sure I exercise? While both of these options may work for some people, they may not work for everyone. But the good news is that there is so much more that you can do to get active. Before we get into actually building a workout plan that works for you, let's first discuss what the guidelines are for exercise. According to the US Department of Health and Human Services Physical Activity Guidelines, adults should aim to get anywhere between 150 to 300 minutes of moderate exercise or alternatively 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous exercise in per week. And on top of that, you should also include two days of muscle building activity that engages all of the major muscle groups of the body. Now, if that sounds like a lot of minutes or even hours of exercise, first let's break it down into what it could look like for an average person. So let's say you're aiming for the lower end of the threshold. That could translate to around three and a half hours a week of working out. How you decide to fill those hours is entirely up to you. That could include two days a week of dancing for an hour, a 30 minute walk one evening, and 30 minutes of weights on two separate days. Now, if you opt for vigorous activity, that could look like a 30 minute run on three mornings out of the week and the same weights routine. But like I said, how you fill that time really is entirely up to you. So if you hate running and you just don't ever see yourself signing up for a Zumba class, then here is a list of options that could certainly count as aerobic exercise. Tango dancing, Pilates, yoga, hiking, belly dancing, boxing, jump rope, swimming, cycling, trampolining, hula hooping, and the list goes on. The important thing is to focus on your perception of exercise. When you think of exercise, do you think of things that you dread doing? Have you given yourself a chance to think about things that you might actually enjoy doing? When you shift your vision of exercise from something that is dreadful to something that you could actually see yourself having fun doing, then it might actually be easier for you to exercise. And it also helps if you smile while you're exercising, it makes it a lot more pleasant. Tip number two is to avoid doing too much too quickly. This is something that I've seen with a number of my clients where they basically try to go from zero to 100 with exercise. And it really isn't a good idea to do that because your body does need time to acclimate to your new routine. And if you think about it, this acclimation isn't just happening in ways that are obvious to us, like when we see muscle growth or redness, this is happening at the cellular level. So down to the way your cells work, your mitochondria work, the way they produce ATP, all of that needs to adjust and build over time when you start exercising. So it's important to listen to your body and let it guide you as you ramp up your exercise instead of just pushing to do a whole lot at once. Doing too much at once can lead to injury, which could in turn keep you from continuing to exercise and put you right back at square one. Now, it can be tempting to put on extra plates at the gym because you see others doing the same, but remember, you have no idea how long these strangers have been exercising for or what their regimen looks like. You have to do what makes sense for where you are and what your body can currently handle. Now, on a slightly different note, keep in mind that guidelines emphasize spacing out exercise events. So it's not a good idea to try to do all three and a half hours, let's say, one day out of the week and then spend the other six days not doing any type of activity at all. 
it's best to do one hour here, one hour there, 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. The key here is to be patient with your body, let it guide you, and remember that patience and persistence will get you far. Tip number three is not to limit physical activity to a specific time of the day. Now, don't get me wrong, having a set routine for your exercise is great for maintaining consistency, but finding small ways to just be more active throughout the day is also really good for your health. Physical activity is a lifestyle, really, and having a more active lifestyle has been associated with living a longer life as well. According to Dan Buettner, author of The Blue Zones, Nine Lessons for Living Longer from the People Who've Lived the Longest, Blue Zone residents live in environments that nudge them into physical activity every 20 minutes or so. They move naturally by doing things like gardening, traversing the streets to get to a local cafe, and doing everyday chores by hand instead of using your typical household appliances. Take a moment to think about what being more active might look like in your life. For me, when I think about ways that I could add more movement in, um, one thing that comes to mind is washing the dishes by hand instead of putting the dishes in the dishwasher, or passing the vacuum on the rug instead of using a Roomba. Modern conveniences are not inherently bad and sometimes it just makes more sense to use them because there are other things that you may need to do with your time. Nevertheless, it may still be worth it to stop and ask yourself, is it necessary for me to rely on these conveniences all of the time? And what do I lose by solely relying on these modern conveniences? Keeping in line with not limiting movement to specific times of day, I would like to highlight the research that has been done on the disadvantages of sitting for prolonged periods of time. Evidence suggests that long periods of sitting are linked to metabolic syndrome, which has five key elements, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, abnormal triglyceride and cholesterol levels, and an accumulation of fat around the waist. Sitting too much has also been associated with cancer and heart disease development. Sitting for eight hours a day is not great for your health, but if you can find ways to get up and get moving every 30 minutes or so, then that would really help. So you can plan things like going to get water every so often, going to take walks, or even doing air squats, just to make sure that every 30 minutes, your body is in motion. How that looks for you is going to really depend on what your work environment looks like and what you like doing to get moving. Tip number four is to get some teammates. Now I've heard from a lot of my clients that working out alone can feel like such a chore that they often end up not doing it just for that reason. But when they have company, be it from their partner, their kids, their friends, suddenly working out doesn't feel like such a drag and the time passes by without them even noticing it. If you resonate with that, then it may be a good idea to join a fitness class at a local gym or community center, round up some friends to go hiking on the weekends, or perhaps take your kids to the park while you do some lunges nearby. If you know that you need that social support, go out and find it. Having workout buddies is great because it also helps you to hold yourself accountable. And another advantage is that if one of you is more experienced with a particular form of exercise, you can teach the other proper form and technique. In turn, this can help to prevent injuries. Now, if you're like me, finding an in-person community may be kind of difficult, but fortunately, we live in the age of the internet, so if you'd rather look for an online community, that can be totally legit too. There are tons of YouTubers and people on all sorts of video platforms that offer workout tutorials and even live streams of exercise if you want to have that one-on-one -on -one or um, real-time interaction while you're doing your workouts. If you have a friend or a family member who is also trying to get more active but they don't live in the same place as you, video calling can also be a great way to have a sense of camaraderie while you're both on your fitness journey. All in all, just know that you are not alone and you certainly don't have to go it alone. 
Now, here's my last tip, tip number five, and it's probably the most important tip of them all, and it is to know your why. One of my favorite quotes in the world um, is from Viktor Frankl, and it encapsulates this idea perfectly. The quote reads, he who knows the why for his existence will be able to bear almost any how. So I want you to take a moment to really stop and think about this. Why do you want to exercise? Not why do you think you should want to exercise, but why do you actually want to exercise? Is it to be around to see your kids graduate high school? Is it to improve your mood or stave off symptoms of depression and anxiety? Is it to be able to travel to the Grand Canyon and do a day hike without getting tired? Don't be afraid to get super, super specific because that why is what is going to get you out of bed in the morning when your brain is giving you a multitude of really legitimate reasons for why you should stay under the covers that morning when you planned the night before to go and do a Pilates class. That why is going to keep you motivated to exercise no matter what's going on in your life or where you are. And that why is going to help you to push through exercise when it starts to feel routine or even boring sometimes. When you know your why, you will find your how. All right, so that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you learned anything or think that this information could benefit someone that you care about, then definitely give it a like, um, share the video and subscribe to my channel for more nutrition and healthy living videos. And if you'd like, you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, or Pinterest for more day-to-day -day type inspiration for healthy living. All right, take care.